Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to my SimCity video tutorials. Today I am going to execute the plan that I showed you and explained to you about Gemstones Valley First Tourism City. I have already made the required city to unlock the gambling HQ in Riverbend. I will show it to you real quick. It's quite a basic setup really, just some residential, commercial, a town hall, high school, uh, passenger train station, ferry terminal, bus terminal, a landmark and a single gambling house which allowed me to build and upgrade the gambling HQ. I was able to unlock the Elgin Casino. The city is now going to stay operational, it's going to provide the, the garbage services and the power for the other cities but later on it is all going to be bulldozed in order for me to make this city into the city that I promised that would be sitting here as my fifth city in this region which was designed by two of the viewers that sent their plans when I had the contest for this plot to be designed by some of you. So now I am actually going to start building my high world tourist gambling city. Now my first design was quite good but it had a flaw. It was only made to support one ferry terminal that was right here. In order for a high wealth gambling city to be successful, I need as many ferry terminals as possible to be built in this city. The airport can bring in more tourists but it costs around 3000 per hour fully upgraded and it brings only a few hundred tourists which is nowhere close to a ferry terminal which costs only about 300 or so when upgraded with the cruise ship mod while it brings over 2000 tourists in one go. So my first move in the city is to build the ferry terminals. One, two, three, and nope, only three. Well, that should be plenty. Connect them with roads and now I can start planning around this. Now I should tell you that I have already made one quite successful high wealth tourism gambling city but it was in sandbox mode. So this time I am doing it for real in my high density region to see if it is possible to do it again with an unlocked HQ that is from another city. I will build an HQ here so that I can bulldoze that entire city over there but for the starters I should have the Elgin Casino unlocked and there it is, very good. Now basically what my plan looks like is this. The high level tourists will be coming in from the ferry terminal, also there are going to be some medium tourists as well. They will be going from the ferry terminals through a street into this middle area. In the middle I will have about 3 or 4 Elgin Casinos, 2 more are going to be down here and up here. While well, on these sides I'm also going to have some cultural buildings which are actually going to be the Oslo Opera House and the Sydney Opera House. I'm going to be using these two landmarks because they can hold events specifically for high wealth and medium wealth tourists which means they should be able to bring in more high wealth tourists and keep them in my city for longer periods of time. My high wealth high density hotels are going to be located down this line where the most of the landmarks and the, the casinos are going to be located as well. So my residential and commercial areas are going to be separated to the left and to the right side. In the middle I should make something like a big runabout. Now I haven't really marked this setup in stone so I will be pausing this video until I figure it out exactly how it's going to look like and once I start building it I will be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. As you can see I have plopped some new buildings that are just there to give me an idea how to create the road network and it took me maybe 30 minutes but I think I have it nailed down. So the Sydney Opera House is down here, the Oslo Opera House is up there. They are gonna be turned on and running events. The high wealth tourists and the medium tourists will be coming in from the ferry terminals and from the highway exits and entrances. They are going to be funneled into this middle avenue and onto this ring. Now why do I have these tall tree rows plopped 
on this avenue on the inside well this is why I am going to use them because as you can see uh, the avenue give you road guides that are far bigger than an actual high density building my idea is that I want to make another runabout in here but that is going to be away from the avenue just enough for a high density building now in order to achieve exactly that but since I don't have an exact road guide I have placed the sparks inside and now by holding the shift key I'm going to ma make exactly that just a runabout that between it and the avenue there is just enough space for a high density building and that's pretty much like this as you can see these tall three rows are just close to the street and you can be sure that there is going to be enough space now I have to apologize for these textures that seem to be going in and out of existence because I have updated my NVIDIA drivers and this has started happening it seems to be mostly connected to trees now I can bulldoze all of these and now for the plot to deepen I'm going to bulldoze this connection as well as this one this way I am tearing down this four-way intersection and also creating a traffic flow that actually has to go either to the right or to the left now this is something that has to go together with my way of funneling the regional traffic I'm going to do something a little bit different than I had previously planned and it's gonna look like something like this Now this is probably the simplest way to connect your city to the, to the original highway and it can create problems if you're not planning on it. Now what I'm thinking is that all my original traffic hits the entrances and has a choice. Go left, go right or make a U-turn if that's what floats your boat. If you go to the right or to the left, whichever side you choose, you hit these two intersections. From there, it depends on what are you doing in my city. If you're just transiting through my city, you can keep on going and go to the other side and exit my city. If you are going to stay here, then you're going to turn into the city and you're going to now hit this huge runabout in the middle. You can again only go to either the right side or the left side now you may be asking uh, so how exactly are you going to connect the inside since there are no intersections well I am going to connect it on several places just by using these streets between these streets I'm going to have my high wealt hotels they're going to be zoned onto this inner street on the other side of this street I'm going to plop the elegant casinos that way my tourists are going to be coming in going either right or left hitting one of these streets and entering this inner runabout from where they can either go to a hotel or start gambling right away this inner part is not connected one reason being I do not want a four-way intersection and the second reason is I want a way for all these people who are going to be working here or just passing by or the tourists to have a way of going between these two parts of the commercial and casino district 
Now, where are my sims going to live at? Well, they are all going to live in between these middle runabouts and the avenues that are leading into the city. All of them are going to be zoned like this. They're going to be going straight into the middle avenue like sun rays you could say. Now an additional trick that I'm going to use is that when I have a street going into the middle avenue, for example something like this, there are not going to be any zones on it. It is just going to transfer traffic from the residential commercial zone into my casino zone. Nobody is going to be living exactly on this street. They are going to be living on streets that are that are parallel to this street. Something like this. And they are going to be zoned once they hit medium and high density like this. So the only way for them to go to their jobs is to go all the way up and then hit an intersection, something like this, and then go from there into the middle intersection. What I'm trying to achieve here is that people who are going to be zoned here and have their own shops here, they're going to have their jobs and their shopping inside their neighborhoods. Only the small fraction of these workers that are actually going to be working in my casinos and hotels here are going to be using the streets, so I'm hoping that I won't have too much traffic on these. Now, there is one main downside to having a road network like this. Uh, this is that my services, let's say police, health, fire, are going to have a hard time going if I were to centralize them right here, going to all these neighborhoods that are connected by a single street. So what I'm going to have to do, it's going to be a bit more expensive, is place around four clinics, four fire stations and four police stations into each of these corners. They're going to be able to control all the residents and commercial that live in those areas. And whenever something is on fire or there's a crime going on in the middle, they can all respond at the same time. When it comes to education, what I'm going to try is, as you saw, this city over here, already has a high school. My city to the left has a university, but I will add a high school to it. So I will have two high schools in cities on the left and the right side that are going to be coming in here with their high school buses and taking away these children to be educated in these two cities. So hopefully that should provide the education necessary for this city's population of students. When it comes to garbage, I'm going to have garbage trucks and recycling trucks coming in from these other cities and picking all the trash up. As for the power, water and sewage, it's going to be brought from any number of these cities. The power can be brought from all the three cities, water from these two and sewage as well. So now that I have explained my entire idea to you, I will spend some time building this road network and see how exactly am I, am I going to zone all those neighborhoods. Okay, so here we are. Let me explain to you this step. So I have connected this inner ring with the outer ring of the avenue in five places on each side. From there, I have connected this avenue with this, this street that goes parallel to the outer avenue that connects the city with the region and all of these end up getting connected to the outer ring but there are no four-way intersections they are all T intersections now this should help reduce the traffic with cars always having only to go to either right or left and never having to go straight forward as well now the streets here are supposed to help with the movement of sims through their own neighborhoods for when they look for work or shopping now, as you can see, I have ended up segmenting into two parts. I have my left side and my right side. So I may end up having only two fire stations, two police stations and two clinics instead of four. Now that depends on how much coverage I can get out of one of each. So I may end up even having four, even though there are now only two parts of the city that are separate, but I would still like this city to be completely covered with the essential services because it seems that tourists do not like it if your city is a burning down b having people sick 
and see if they are getting their money snatched in the middle of the street. When it comes to placement of the casinos, I have enough room here for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 elegant casinos. Now, the number of elegant casinos will depend on the number of high wealth tourists. So, even though I may end up plopping all 9 at the same time, I may not be turning on all 9 until much later on. There is one other reason why I have again in this city used streets parallel to avenues. But in order to explain that to you, I will have to go into my second city to show you something very interesting that I have seen while making this city go to higher density and setting up more utilities for the other cities. Now, if I can just find the same spot again, I'll be able to show you what I'm talking about. I think it was here. And yeah, but nothing is happening here at the moment. What time is it? 8 a.m. Should be possible to see it happening. Give me a second. Uh, let's just take out this place. Ah, there you go. You see this? I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it first. Check this out. You see this lady? She's going shopping. Actually, she's going home. But she just went from a street that is entirely not connected to this avenue. She crossed that street, she went into the traffic and into this streetcar car stop. So it seems that you do not even have to connect the streetcars with the actual streets. They just have to run parallel enough and sims are gonna end up walking over the street and then again into this avenue. And now you can see these kids going back from school. They just keep going from the street to the avenue to the streetcar car stop. And <laughs> how they are not getting killed by <laughs> the oncoming traffic, don't ask me, please. In any event, that seems to be working quite nicely. And there are more places where the same thing is happening. You can see it here. They can cross from this street onto this avenue and onto the streetcar stops. It's hilarious, but seems possible. Now, if you're asking yourself, why did I even show you that? Well. This is because I may end up having a streetcar network in this city as well. And by having the streets go close to the avenues, I can then plop a streetcar stop here. And the sims that walk through this street will be able to just hop on to those streetcars going through this avenue, even though this street is not actually connected to the avenue. Quite a nifty trick, wouldn't you agree? So guys, let me show you what's new. I have added two fire stations on each side four clinics, one in each corner. Same goes for the police stations, one on each corner. Now, I'm hoping that these services are going to be enough to cover this entire city, despite this very strange setup of my streets. Now, let me show you how I zoned it. This inner ring here, as I told you before, is going to be all hotels. When it comes to commercial shops and residential, I have zoned it now how it is going to be zoned for high density. Now you can see on which streets am I going to have my exit and entrances from these homes and shops. You can see that some of these streets are connected sideways to the actual streets that move into this avenue in the middle. I have had to do this because of the shape of these streets that lead into it because not all of this space was possible to be used properly for a high density building. So I had to make some changes. I have added some of these streets that go straight into the streets that lead into the main avenue, while there are other streets that only go into these outer streets and from there lead on to the streets that go into the main avenue. So it's gonna be quite a ride to see how this turns out. Now, you might notice also that there isn't that much space for residential and commercial. I'm hoping that this will not be a problem and that the other cities will have some extra workers that then can commute into this city, but I'm also hoping that I won't need as many. I'm going to need a lot of high wealth and medium wealth workers. 
the percentage of high wealth and medium wealth workers is quite high in a city like this and therefore I need my land value to be mostly high and medium. Only small pieces of this land will be left as a low land value for low wealth residents. So I am going to probably have to use a lot of parks in order to increase the land value. The things that are going to increase the land value a lot are these casinos because once you place them here and in here and over here they are going to spread out high land value. Then on top of that these landmarks give off medium land value and all of these service buildings also give off the medium land value. So once I turn on all of these buildings I'm going to be able to see just how much medium land value they are expanding. I'm going to see how much these elegant casinos one here and the other one here are going to influence the land value and they are going to be the first ones I'm going to plop because the ones in here the only thing that they are going to be influencing with their land value will be these hotels here and since these hotels need to be high wealth I will probably add some parks besides only these casinos that are going to be giving off high land value. When it comes to the casino HQ there will be enough space right here because these, these casinos are going to be turned into this street so there will be enough space here for a casino HQ and on the other side it's going to be enough space for a town hall. So that would be the overview of building this city. Now before I can start this city I have to make sure that my education is set up in the other two cities which are going to provide the high school education to this city. So I have already built one high school in this city and I need another one in this one. I suppose I can use this spot at the university for a high school. Yep. Plenty of space. One high school, one upgrade, and a lot of high school buses. Now I just wait for it to be operational. There we go, the school is now operational. I don't have any school bus stops in this city so I don't expect to make kids to be going to the high school instead of the university and while I'm in this city I can always turn it off so that the kids will be going to the university and not to the high school. I only need the high school while I'm playing in this city. The high school in that city has already been upgraded and has a lot of school buses so all that is left is to place the school bus stops in this city. What I usually try to do when I'm placing the school bus stops is to see where my entrances and exits from homes is going to be once they hit medium density and also for my school buses not to have to go through too many streets. So what I will usually do is just put them on the side streets so that the kids from the streets on the inside will have to go to those streets and my buses will hopefully not go through each and every one of these streets before they pick up the kids. So one school bus stop here, another one here, another one down here. Since this street has only one connection to the outside city and that is here, I am going to have to plop a school bus stop on the side of the street where the entrances and exits from the homes are going to be. So that means that it has to go here. Now that the school bus stops have been placed, I have finished my last step in making the city made ready for Sims to start moving in. So let's have at it Sims.
And there we go. Petition to build the town hall has been approved. So let's have at it. Our town hall should go right about here. Let's see if that's fine with the Elgon casinos. Yep, that is picture perfect. Let's follow one of my new sims on his way into my city. Here's one. Welcome, Sims. I am Peter, your mayor. Have a good time. Now that I have more and more leveled Sims moving into my city, they are most likely going to start getting sick. Which means, soon enough, I'm going to have to turn on all my four clinics. Then, they are most likely going to start a few fires. Then, I'm going to need to turn on my fire stations. And, soon enough, they are going to turn to crime then I'm going to need my police stations. What this means is when I turn on all those services, my land value is going to go up next to those buildings. And for those new open jobs, I'm going to need medium wealth and high wealth workers. So as soon as I turn these civic buildings on, I'm going to have to start creating medium wealth and high wealth land value so that I'm going to be able to move in more medium wealth and high wealth sims and have them take those jobs. The reason why I'll be turning on the fire departments, the clinics and the police stations and then adding to the land value with parks is because I wish to add my parks while I have still zoned only the roadsides where I am already planning to have my exits and entrance once I hit medium and high land value. And I want to be able to see these because I want my parks to have their entrances and exits on the same side of the street. It would be quite pointless if I were to now build parks that have their exits and entrance on the opposite side of the streets where my sims are living. So I'm now just going to wait to see that my sims are going to fill up all the areas that I have already zoned and then I will be turning on the civil services, seeing where the land value is, building enough parks to increase that land value in most of the city, leaving only a few parts of the city at low land value, for my low wealth seems to move in, in order to make sure that my elegant casinos are going to have the necessary workforce. Now, a not too bad idea would be to also plop these two elegant casinos, of which one goes here and the other one goes here. This is because they give off, as I said previously, their own land value. So once you have them placed here and they start working, they're going to give off land value, which is going to influence this part here and I'm going to be able to see where exactly should I be placing my parks. There is one quite important consideration to make before I continue. Is the education going to be supplied by the two cities that should be sending their high school buses to my city? Well, we are about to find out. It's almost 6 a.m. about the time when those buses are supposed to be heading out, so I will just park myself right here, turn on the education overlay, and wait for those buses to come in. The kids are obviously going to the school bus stops, as you can see, and there they are. School buses have just entered my city. So hopefully they are going to be able to go through the city and pick up all these kids. Most of the kids have been picked up. So I should keep watching and see if they are actually going to be returned to my city and go into homes and make these 
homes, educated homes. In the meantime, I should check on my health and there we are. I have one injured and one sick sim, which means that I have to now turn on all these clinics. Now that the clinics are online, they are going to be increasing the land value. And there you have it. Now the trick is that only this clinic over here is going to have another land value to intersect with. That is going to be this police station. So once these two intersect, they are going to create medium land value. And some of these homes and shops are going to become medium wealth homes. If I look over to the fire department, I can see that I have already had two fires, but they were extinguished by the fire trucks coming in from my other two cities. So for now, I can leave my fire, fire stations off until I see some fires that cannot be extinguished by the neighboring fire trucks. When it comes to police, I do not have any crimes committed so I will not be turning the police stations on for now. I should check if all my clinics have started working. This one has, this one has, same as here and the last one, yep, they are all working means all these sims are gonna be taken care of. Now my next concern is are my kids gonna be brought back from school and is my education level gonna go up? Well, the school buses seem to be still in my city and there are a few kids that haven't been picked up. So let's go to Cheetah Speed and see what happens. Well, the first thing that happened is that these school buses have decided to leave my city but some have decided to come back in. Are my kids actually going to leave their homes? That is a totally different question. For now it seems they will not. Okay, am I going to have my kids returned after the school day? That is another question. To which I would love to know the answer to. And there we go! I seem to have some kids returning from school and these homes are now educated. This means that the plan works. Now it may still say students enrolled zero, but when it comes to the student Population overview, it does say that 200 students have commuted out, which means they were taught at least something. Now it says that this number is going down, down, down. This is probably because these kids have actually returned for today, therefore that number has gone down. So tomorrow morning this number will probably again go up and as they return from being educated that number will go down. So all in all, my education plan seems to be working out. I can already upgrade the city hall. If I take a look at the rest of the city, I can see that most of these zones have been filled up. Some have yet to be filled up, but most have been filled up. This means that I should continue on zoning on the other side of the streets while I am still at low density to fill this city up with the maximum number of workers that I can get at low density. My low wealth workers seem to be unemployed, but this is only temporary because I do not have any medium or high wealth homes in my city. Once I turn these low wealth into medium wealth and high wealth, this number is gonna go down, but this number will go up. And then these two numbers will go down, so it should all balance itself out. Now as you can imagine, Turning this city into something prosperous is going to take quite a while and I think that this video has gone on long enough. So thank you for watching and please stay tuned on my channel for more.